Well, um, Beth, this is uh, wonderful to be here with you. Um, just for the record, this is Beth Whitney Teeple, who was worked with me in the 1980s on the uh, first VA DOD interface between March Air Force Base and Loma Linda. And uh, so Beth is um, hasn't been involved in this for quite a while, so yeah, we're uh, we're pushing the boundaries of her limits, but. Uh, Anyway, Beth, do you want to uh, just describe your involvement in this a little bit and your, your history? Sure. Um, I had a lot of fun going back and I unearthed a lot of notes um, when Tom gave me the opportunity to come here and have this conversation um, and had kept a lot of notes. And so when I sat down to look at them, um, one of the things I was, I had this handwritten notebook, which was a log day by day of, you know, things that I had done. And, as I read through it, I was sort of mystified by why there was all this confusion and all these people and all this obstruction. And, and then I realized that that was pre the ADOD sharing. That was my arrival at March, and March was a test site for many uh, military systems. That's why I had been sent there to be their first systems officer and get, you know, try RAD and try FARM. Remember we were all the, in, the IOCs? IOCs, incompatible operating yeah, capabilities. Yeah, right, that's how it stood for. But yes, they were, indeed yeah. they were. Um, so we were, had had these multiple test sites there at March, and that was what all this, I mean, it was just amazing to read, you can't get this and you can't get that, and we were, at the same time we were distributing PCs throughout the hospital, that was brand new, no one had done that before. Um, and then suddenly, there's this switch at the end of this log to suddenly mailman notes. <laughs> you know, huge volumes of mailman notes that I still have. Um, and that was when I, May, let's see, May 29th, 1984 was the day that I um, went over to Loma Linda and met with George Boyden. And then, uh, who was, I don't remember his title, but in any event, he introduced me to Tom. Um, and the idea was small. We were not having any success at March getting a patient appointing system in place. And we thought, well, we could sh perhaps we could share. Um, and the public law, 92-174, was the VA DOD sharing law. This is the Montgomery uh, sponsored bill? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was a public law. I'm not okay. sure whether he well, actually fit any of that. Um, and so it was under that heading and rubric that we had the opportunity to share. And then when I went back and looked at all the various names um, that were involved, particularly from the VA side, and truly, many of these folks gave their lives, literally gave their lives. <laughs> um, there, uh, Glenn Mueller is no longer with us. Um, David Van Huser, who was certainly, mm -hmm. you know, Ingeborg Korn, Kuhn. Yeah. Um, and the people, that George Thompson, of course. Yeah. Uh, people who, did a lot of wonderful, amazing work, and, yeah. and you know, uh, are no longer with us. George is still with us, by the way. George Timson? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, George. <laughs> yeah, he's five and well in Tucson. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. So. For some reason, I thought George had gone on. Oh, okay. Um, that's great to hear. Um, well, the uh, let's go back to the Trimus and the IOCs first okay. of all. And uh, my rec introduction to it was that this was DoD's effort to. Uh, build a tri-military medical information system and they were doing it piecemeal through uh, functional specifications for lab pharmacy and radiology as three separate entities with three contractors and three separate things that someday they would integrate mm -hmm. and uh, so this is about a 250 million dollar effort that uh, first of all they didn't even succeed on their their primary three goals but uh, they never got to the integration level uh, DHCP at the time, Decentralized Hospital Computer Program, started out as an integrated effort with different modules. So we had an integrated database and what today we recognize as metadata describing this. And DHCP has grown to VISTA in 178 modules today, 168 modules that are active for packages. So it's this one infrastructure that you do a whole bunch of uh, iterations of simple changes mm -hmm. around an integrated database. So uh, my understanding was that the, uh, the, this effort here was actually a, a prototype that the Congress and GAO used then to validate the concept of a DHCP-like system for the DOD use. 
So anyway, you were a lieutenant at the time. I was a lieutenant, right. And uh, so, so what happened? Tell me what, what, so you went over and you met so George and me. I met George and you and at La Luenda, and um, uh, Tom kept saying, no, think big. <laughs> bigger, think bigger. <laughs> because I was thinking about one little terminal with a little dial-up line to the VA, and we would schedule, schedule uh, uh, appointments on that. Uh, and by the time we finished, we had, I think, all the modules that you were yeah. running at the time. We had a congressionally mandated, um, we have language in the congressional record that says, you will do this. Um, we have lots of wonderful letters from Octo Barnett and Sonny Montgomery and you know, people uh, talking about um, the necessity to test the VA system. Of course, that didn't turn out exactly the way we had hoped because, I think, I can say that, because what we had hoped is that we would have the opportunity to move forward with DHCP, and what we got was a vendor-based software, right. which was not what we were yeah. looking for. So, the, um, so what, what actually did get installed, and in, do you remember the actual um, modules well, that were running? Well, um, pharmacy and radiology, and um, uh, patient appointment and scheduling, and mental health, and what else would there be? I mean, I, 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 mailman, of course, well, was you know, mailman well, and file man. Yeah. You know, we were running. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, okay. but, yeah, yeah. So the fact that you can't even remember which modules is yeah, I have a list, but it was yeah. it was a, it was more than it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, the point is that it was just this pluggable architecture. Right, exactly. And oh, okay. Well, we'll right. do this package right. today. Another functional and, unit would come forward and say, yeah. uh, you know, that looks like something we could use, and then yeah. we would work with you to. Uh, yeah bring it online and yeah. you know, make whatever changes we needed to make to make it DOD specific, yeah. which wasn't always easy. You know, yeah. There were things like DEERS integration and things that yeah. were, were difficult. But. My understanding though was, was the, the basic integration was fairly straightforward with changing the, uh, the VA social security number to have a family member prefix for mm -hmm. the military uses a, a different coding system. Right. Yeah, well, I think we had three programmers working on it uh, total. Rick, uh, Rick Norbert, Rick Spangler, Spangler and Mueller. And, mm -hmm. and then we had a couple of people that we hired at our little end to work yeah. on. But yes, uh-huh. Right. But this all happened uh, fairly quickly. I, I mean, I don't know the exact dates, but from the time we started to Absolutely. the time we had a... Yeah, right. right. So... Yeah, it was well less than a year. And, so. and the cost was... What was also interesting in reading back through the history was how often when there would be an obstacle on the DOD side, the yeah. VA would say, well, we have extra hardware. We'll just put it in place until you can get that straightened out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of cooperation and support from that side. The, uh, so the benefits of the sharing uh, with the Montgomery public, whatever the law that, was that we used to do this. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, Beth just showed up in my office one day and, and had this papers in her hand saying, you know, you're supposed to share with me. And <laughs> there's a law that says we share. And uh, so that's how it all got started. And uh, I was I was predisposed to sharing anyway, but um, I would have shared if I not wanted to. She was fairly uh, uh, persuasive in her uh, attitude. But anyway, they, they, the having this agreement in place, I think one of the key things and the reason that it did work mm -hmm. is that the benefits from the sharing, uh, the cost savings went back to the organizations doing the sharing. So Loma Linda made money, March made money, and it didn't go back to the federal treasury. And so the, 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 it was a grassroots sharing model of getting people in the field to be incentivized to share and recognize the cost efficiencies. So I remember things like patient scheduling and ambulance services, and, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of shared services that just kind of organically evolved. Do you remember that? Beyond DHCP. Maybe. Yeah. Um, there was, yes, there were, there, yes, we began to share um, some medical services as well. Yeah. yeah. And how did that work out? I mean, was it just a minor activity or was it significant? Well, I think it was very secondary to the system sharing. Okay. Um, uh, and just, I, I don't think that that was that wasn't a good. major effort. There were major efforts, I think, spawned by our use of that law yeah. at other facilities throughout the country. Um, perhaps not so much at March. We were concentrated on yeah. on that particular kind of sharing. But I see. Um, so and then the system also went in at Fitzsimmons and Denver. Fitzsimmons and uh, uh, in, in well, Colorado. That's where, uh, and then Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Kirtland. Yeah. Um, 
and Carswell, I, I think was, there was, there yeah. were a number of other places that were testing small, different parts. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we had it up and running. Um, we had a, a review by uh, Arthur Dean Little to do a study on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met a man named John Glazer, who right. uh, is now uh, Vice President of, CEO of Siemens Healthcare and right. previous CIO of Partners. John was a bit younger back then. but uh, So we had the study. Do you remember what the study actually showed? Well, the study was interesting. It didn't, it was not as the language, if you parsed out the language, you know, it was, um, uh, not as positive overall in its languaging as we yeah. would have hoped. Yeah. Um, but in reading some of the um, rebuttal to that, you know, it was interesting for me to read what I wrote, what yeah. um, Marty Zizzi wrote, who was very much in our court. He was my commanding officer at the time, and, and uh, yeah. um, you know, the kinds of things where we said th these are number one factually wrong. There were there were statements, and <laughs> at least that was. You know, I, the rebuttals that we wrote were, these are factually not correct, yeah. you know. Um, and, and then sort of the subjective assessments of things um, were not, yeah. were something that, that we felt were not actually accurate. But do I you did. have that report? I do. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I have both, both the original Arthur D. Little report as well as my rebuttal and Marty's rebuttal. I see. And I think yours as well. Was I in that? Oh, yes. Oh, you, I, had, you had much to say about that. I'd like to hear, hear what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't uh, shy about expressing myself uh, then or now. but. Uh, well, uh, I remember uh, this was one of the things that really stands out in my memory is the GAO was also invited, of course, yeah. to continually do this. And I remember I, I found the name of the person. I was really could not remember. He was a, uh, had, had escaped from behind the Iron Curtain. I don't quite remember yeah. Czechoslovakia or somewhere. Um, and he, so he had a lot of, he was a real person intent on freedom. Yeah. And one day he was sitting in my office and he said, aren't you frightened? And I said, frightened of what? Of course I was young and naive, I didn't know enough to be frightened, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, well this threatens a billion dollars, you yeah. know, many billions of dollars, you know, and if yeah. you're successful. Yeah. You know, Okay, you know, <laughs> but he was really quite serious about that. Yeah. Mike Dolan, Dolak, he's still Dolak. apparently still with the GAO. Um, so that was that was something that really stuck in my mind was that we we were doing something that at our level, yeah, it never really I don't I don't know if it ever occurred to you. It certainly never occurred to me to be frightened, even though we were pushing it to be done at a national level. I mean, we thought yeah. what we were doing was right and was good. You know? Yeah, I, I I don't think frightened was. I was angry at the bureaucracy. Uh, yeah. Anger was probably my greatest motivation at the time. Yeah. I'd been devo demoted, I don't know if you know that, and I was just now coming out from being undemoted for the success of DHCP. I never got promoted for my work in the VA, mm -hmm. um, but um, I don't think I was frightened. I just wanted to see it happen. Right. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't bring our Underground Railroad Moses Express or Moses uh, Blackbird. Moses right. Blackbird. Blackbird's uh, <laughs> chart, but we also had an underground effort to parallel to the Underground Railroad and the military. And I don't think it took off the way that the VA Underground uh, took off. Uh, no, I didn't, uh, because of some very concentrated efforts yeah. uh, to, to make sure that, that we were that I was recruited to the other side. And <laughs> I see. <laughs> As I think perhaps were you at some point. Well, I, yeah. I, I, well, where were you recruited to? What what happened to you? I went to DOD. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as and, what? And worked on um, the selection of the vendors and you know, the for CHCS. Yeah. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So they, they were also able to uh, control you more and not have you running around yeah. doing uh, which I think was a high motivation on their part. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Okay, well that's that, that's interesting. Uh, well, I went to SAIC, of course, and um, uh, pretty the set aside vendor. Oh, what? The set aside. Yeah, vendor. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the SAIC was given. Well, as a result of the test, uh, Congress said that one of the competitors for CHCS would use uh, a DHCP-based architecture, and SAIC became that proposal vendor. And I have been wanting to move to San Diego for a long time, and I've actually been asking the uh, VA to transfer me to the CA, or 
VA San Diego. I'm an ocean person. So I wanted to get out of Riverside and into San Diego, and I couldn't get San Diego to transfer me, and uh, I saw no uh, uh, job potential in the VA, and uh, maybe it was time for me to move on anyway. So as this is all going on, I got a call from SAIC, and Chris Richardson, in fact, he's here at this meeting, uh, gave SAIC my name. So I went down to San Diego, and, and there was this office and overlooking the La Jolla Cove with a, a full window over the ocean. And uh, they said, would you like to come work for us? And I said, yes. <laughs> so that's how I got to recruited uh, the ocean. But um, so at SAIC, we had to then port DHCP to the CHCS requirements. So that, that's a whole other story uh, by itself. Mm -hmm. But one of the things also, and I'm not sure how much you remember this, but I was developing mailmen at the time, specifically uh, to communicate between VA and DOD. And I was working with some of the original internet architects, John Postel at ISI and Marina Del Rey. And um, I remember calling up John and saying, I want to build this interface. And I said, what do you want to build it from? I said, well, the VA. So what? okay, well, I'll give you va.gov, a domain name. So that's how that domain name happened. Mm -hmm. And they said, what do you want to talk to? I said, March. I said, well, okay, we'll make that March dot dash af dot mil dot whatever. So well, I named you also and about, I don't know, 15 other military sites with a phone call. Know about that. And uh, uh, so I, I, anyway, that's how the domain name system worked back then. <laughs> so I, and then I built this <laughs> SMTP, <laughs> SMTP uh, protocol uh, with John to connect March and Loma Linda. And so it was. It was like an email message that was going. And at the time, email was quite innovative for yes. for anything. Right. And you have a lot of mailmen in your hand there. But uh, I also you was using that for transferring medical information. We had a thing called filegrams, and uh, the idea of actually sending medical information from one site to the other through this packaged format, which. Um, um, amazingly has resurfaced uh, the Office of the National Coordinator for Health and Human Services called the Direct Project. Hmm. And um, it's almost a reincarnation of that idea of using SMTP to transfer the data. Uh, and instead of filegrams, there's an XML thing, it's a, a, a later technology. But um, the, the, the basic architectural ideas of using the, the domain names as ways of transferring the information. Mm -hmm. And I, I did encryption back then, I, I call it scrambling, and I, I got the algorithm out of Byte magazine, and I <laughs> coded it up one Sunday afternoon, but it was encrypted. Anyway, so that was the, the, the earliest uh, uh, version of that that I recall, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not sure if we actually were transferring medical information between that. Did you, was that? I think we were. I, some of my review, the, uh, there was some discussion about um, moving some medical information okay. um, both between the facilities and also within the facility. You know, yeah. um, and and there was, um, I remember again reading some through some of the notes the fact that the Privacy Act day, the Privacy Act was had to be on the bottom of it. You know, there was some okay. yeah. Other, yeah. sort of concessions to that. Precursor to HIPAA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, one of the philosophies and, um, um, was you know, just get started with something that's good enough and then evolve it and grow it. And that's how DHCP worked out. And rather than the, the elaborate specifications and requirements process of, of just getting something that's working, mm -hmm. and once it starts working, do more to make it better. It's called agile development in today's uh, buzzword environment. Mm -hmm. And I thought we had something that was good enough. I mean, I thought it was workable. Um, Everybody I knew was happy with what Mark, was going March on. was very happy with it, and again, that's all documented by not just me, who happened to be in the middle of it, but other um, you know, department heads and various things, yeah. uh, and notes about their uh, pleasure working with that and yeah. you know, being willing to switch from other systems onto that, and it was successful. Yeah, yeah I think that was. So, so in my world, um, it, to replicate it, you just put another domain name in the table and find somebody that was a champion at the local site and uh, make it happen. And I mean, it would have been a very simple viral spread of this. And um, you, uh, you know, and then 
once people saw that it working, we would have made it better, and maybe the security needed a lot more attention. And, and the, the argument frequently from DOD had to do with the, the human resources model, you know, more than the systems model, that, that we didn't have the stability in DOD to continuously staff uh, and, and maintain yeah. um, software in the way that the VA did. Uh-huh. You no, know, I think that has... And that has some... So people are rotating right. through all the time. Right, yeah. yeah. People are rotating through and, you know, just you know, might be called away at a moment's notice. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a different kind of world. Sure. Uh, so that was, that. I think that was um, put forth as the argument for vendor-based software. You know, they're going to be stable. We're not. I see. Uh, what about hiring civilians to do that role? I mean, isn't there a role for civilians to be stable in a facility? There is, but that was not the people that were primarily the systems officers and the commanders of the hospitals and people that would, that would yeah. make that happen at the local level. But could D of D, from an HR standpoint, health or personnel standpoint, could they have hired civilians that would have stayed around in the event of a, a, a call up or whatever? Uh, yes, so. I mean, that, it's not an, it would have been a change, but they yeah. could have done that. Yeah. So. so that was, so. Again, what was frequently presented as the argument for not doing that was the argument for going with a vendor yeah. instead of changing their model, yeah. you know, their internal hiring model. So, well, this is interesting. I, I uh, uh, I'm learning a lot as we go here. Uh, okay, okay, so and the Indian Health Service, of course, was also part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're here, by the way, and I have to say that I think that the IHS was probably the most creative adopter of. DHCP, mm -hmm. and if you do this chart of amount of money they had versus their creativity, it, it was more money, less creativity, and there's a whole lot to be said for, you know, starving artist approach to creative activities, but IHS, I think, has consistently over the years been the most uh, uh, focused on the, 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 the real value of the, of the system, mm -hmm. and um, Unfortunately, we can't interview the IHS people because they're still government employees. So, ah. but uh, I, my impression of the IHS over the years is that they've been uh, very creative users of it, and the DoD has been a little bit stifling of creativity at the t over time. Mm -hmm. at, at times, I guess. Mm -hmm. But okay, so where are we? We've got the the system up and running. It's working, and this is about 1985 now, and. So GAO studied it, Arthur D. Little, which was commissioned by DOD, uh, studied it, and uh, so, yes, I'd love to see that report and the, mm -hmm. the analysis or the rebuttals right. to it. So then um, Congress comes along and said one of the vendors for the composite healthcare system for DOD would be proposing a DHCP solution, mm -hmm. and I got recruited to SAIC to play uh, systems architect for them. And you got pulled into DOD in Washington. Right. And uh, so what happened in March at that point? Well, I, it sort of, you know, March became, it became part of the BRAC uh, Which is process, base, re base realignment and closure within the next, you know, following years. And so it is no longer a viable base. The hospital closed. It was, you know, all that was just sort of changing. Yeah. Um, unrelated to yeah. the systems world. So but it went away. When did actually. March go away? Um, within the within, I would say within five years from the time we did yeah. that. So then, okay. you know, early '90s. We were like, we were '85, and in the early '90s, March okay. became a reserve base. Yeah. Um, so the hospital was no longer was no longer and is okay. not now a functioning hospital. Okay. So then you went to DoD and worked on the. Source We're selection done, board? Or? Well, I w not on the source selection board for CHCS. I think that might have been a conflict of interest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were later source selections of, uh, when we switched the TRICARE process uh, that I was on. But I worked for, I think then it was called Dempsey Defense Medical Systems Support Center. Uh, yeah. like Mike Mestrovich and Al Andrioni were the people who had been sort of our nemesis when we were at March, and now that's who I worked for. Um, and it was it was we were really trying to restructure the architecture, uh, so it was interesting. I think there was some there was some creativity, and oh, yes. Mike had come from the Deers world, yeah. and you know that would then I mean he had sort of created that. He had yeah. he was not he was no slouch. Okay. <laughs> okay. Know, he, was, 
and it was and is uh, still involved in, in this world. Um, okay. So it was that was fun. I just became a bit disconnected from yeah. trying to, you know, it was. It, it appeared that it was going of its own yeah. volition into this vendor world. Yeah. yeah. Well, the. Um well, I guess uh, from my perspective, um, I had hoped to carry forward the momentum from March into CHCS and uh, the network model and the connectivity. And this had been the plan from 1978 at the original March or, uh, Oklahoma City uh, conference. We had the VA and DOD uh, and IHS and some university people together. So it was always intended to be a, uh, you know, a government-wide architecture. Uh, driven by the stated dictionary approach. And what we had with the uh, March test, to me, was, yeah, we have one link that's working, let's let's do more of this. And unfortunately, when we got to CHCS, uh, I was hit with this 9,600 requirements list of, it looks like somebody took a shoebox for 20 years worth of mm. thinking and threw all the requirements in it, and they just handed them out, and they said, oh, do it, and by the way, if there's any inconsistency in the requirements, it's your problem, not ours. And we'd have things about punch card formats and line printers and things from two generations past. And but I remember that uh, less than you know two, one or two percent of the requirements mentioned electronic mail, if even that much. Mm -hmm. And I, I went ahead and pushed mailman into it as a communications architecture, and to me. I was always designing a, uh, uh, a speech community of people talking about health, mm -hmm. um, some of the things they use with the electronic medical record, but just communicating um, is, was the most important part of it all. So um, the GAO study that uh, after CHCS went in and said that the values, uh, the benefits of using mailman was enough to pay for the cost of CHCS, so just the raw email system was enough yeah. to, to justify it. Do you remember Access? The, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of an oddity that spun off of that, I think, because that was that was MOPS-based yeah. VA software, really. That, okay, maybe that I don't rebuilt. know Access. That was, Access was um, AQCESS, you know, the usual acronym thing. Um, yeah. Automated Quality Assurance something or other. Okay. And it was a separate system that DOD mm -hmm. built as a standalone. Yeah. To go to all the all the hospitals, and it would yeah. it would run on a smaller setup, and so on and so forth. Um, and it essentially took the VA software, yeah. bought it again, which I yeah. always thought was odd, you know, yeah. since we already owned it because it was a government developed system. But we bought it once again and built it into that uh, access and proliferated it. Uh, and I think it's sort of drifted beneath the seas Drift now. Away. Yeah. Well, I I like to say that. Uh, I've interfaced VA and DOD three times now, yeah. <laughs> and they were uh, technically correct but politically incorrect, and the the problems have not been technical. It, 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 the problems have all been uh, procedural, the bureaucracy, the turf wars. I, I attributed almost all the turf issues, and if we share, who's going to lose turf? Mm -hmm. And if Hospital X shares something with Hospital B, uh, is Hospital uh, first hospital going to get rift for not needing that function anymore. So you're, you're taking jobs and turf away from the people who are sharing, so why should they share? And until we get at that fundamental issue, which is an OMB uh, political issue, uh, I think we're just trying to push a, push a, a, a rope um, uphill or something like mm -hmm. that. But I don't think the incentives are really baked into the no. bureaucracy to make it happen. Well, it's interesting now, because I am, I am a DOD medical beneficiary, having retired from the Air Force. Um, I also have, um, because of some minor disability, the right to receive care at the VA. And so, um, it, and never, you know, the two hospitals, Madigan Army Medical Center and McCord Air Force Base, which are now a joint base, and the American Lake VA are within spitting distance of one another. But if I walk in one or walk in the other, never the twain shall meet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. just completely separate. Yeah. So, it's, it hasn't changed much in that regard. Yeah, yeah, and again, until there's an organic reason for the bureaucracy to move, it's not going to move. Mm -hmm. 
this happens about every 10 years. I've seen it three or four times now, but you know, somebody gets up on the hill and huffs and puffs and says, oh, you're not talking together. So they, they have a big meeting and the secretaries come along and says, yes, we'll do it. And then nothing happens. And then 10 years later, new, new congressmen, new secretaries, so often in the puffing. Mm -hmm. So the hill huffs and puffs and nothing happens at the lower level. And it, even if the top level, secretary level says that we're gonna do something, it gets stymied in the, the, the mid-level range. And when the, when the turf hits the bureaucracy or turf hits the reality, uh, the turf gets protected. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're, we're going through another round of uh, huffing and puffing on the hill and right. money flowing. But I'm afraid that we're just kind of renaming the old systems and asking for twice as much money. And mm -hmm. uh, my fear is nothing new is gonna happen out of it. Mm -hmm. um, Am I being cynical? Uh, <laughs> Realistic, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, um, so t from my standpoint, what happened uh, with uh, CHCS is that we started um, having requirements to basically disassemble the network interface or, or not even turn it on. Uh, so we rolled out CHCS without the connectivity that I had built in for the file and table builds, for example, to be communicated across the network. Mm -hmm. So everybody ended up doing their own file table builds, no, no connectivity, and, and the, the sense of creating a path of least resistance in DHCP and saying it's mm -hmm. easier to use the, the standard file or whatever, and you're connected, so you're already there. So what I saw happening was this uh, mismatch between the adaptability that we built into DHCP and the the requirements based hyper specificity of of the 9600 requirements in, in that came out of Trimus or I don't know where they came from but so the DOD was very requirements waterfall oriented and DHCP was adaptive and flexible and and uh, trying to uh, to work with things as they came and so that was the fundamental mismatch, and um, I, don't, I don't know if, well, I do know, I think it's continued, and the DOD is continuing a, a very formalistic requirements-based, I don't think they call it waterfall anymore, but it, it's still at its heart a waterfall development process that, that, that somebody knows in advance what we need to do, and all we need to do is execute this plan. Um, and over the years, I've, I've evolved my thinking. I call it plan, execute versus search, amplify. Mm. And it comes out of my looking at the third world development process. But uh, plan, execute is where you set a plan and your job is to make it work. And in third world, uh, we invent a polio vaccine and you execute a plan to vaccinate people and eradicate polio, which works well for, for polio. You know, you don't expect people to discover their own polio vaccine and and inoculate themselves. Uh, search Amplify is a different model of looking for what's working out there and then doing more of it. And in different contexts, different things will work, but there's a lot of creativity and there's a lot of, of grassroots knowledge, if you will, in the local context that can then be propagated and, you know, and worked up. And it's a little bit like the difference between Wikipedia and Encyclopedia Britannica of, you know, people say, oh, it's this this chaotic mess of, of, of stuff in Wikipedia. And it's true, there's, there's, there's poor articles in Wikipedia, but compared to the Encyclopedia Britannica approach of having a, a established set of experts who, who can't possibly keep up with everything that's going on, so Wikipedia is good enough to get started and say, okay, well, I read this article, but what are the, what's the real justification for it? And you follow the links, and then you have to build up your own knowledge of what's happening in Wikipedia versus uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. So I think, you know, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Google, the Amazon, and the eBay, and the Trigs list are all showing us a way of, of a scalable community approach to things as opposed to a top-down hierarchical approach. And um, so, I, I mean, this is a giant clash of cultures, obviously, and um, I guess we'll see what, what's happening, but part of my concern is that we're just pushing ourselves up this exploding level of level of exploding complexity in both healthcare and the way we're treating it and our, uh, the organizations behind it and the, the, the bureaucracies and 100,000 pages of laws for uh, this. And 
ICD-10 now has a, a code for um, being crushed by a non-venomous reptile, yeah. and that's now a code that the doctor can use to describe you. And that level of specificity, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of other animals out there that we need to a code now, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I, I guess I'm looking for a return to simplicity in some place. And what, what, what could we do that's good enough to get started? And, well, interestingly, uh, I think, and, and uh, Marty, you remember Marty Sizzy, who was not Marty Sizzy? terribly well, but. Okay. Well, you should reacquaint yourself with Marty Sizzy. Is he still around? Okay. Yeah, he's yeah. Eastern Washington. Had we known, we could have gotten him over here. Sure. Anyway, um, because he was very instrumental in making this happen. He was, yeah. uh, he was in a position you know, to protect me. Had he chosen not to do that, yeah. this would not have happened at all. Yeah. Um, I was in the same boat, by the way. My director protected me from the central office. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Centralist, yeah. thank you to those folks yeah. that were willing to do that. But, you know, he was frequently would point us toward the line community. So the line community, in many ways, is is more creative at the local level than the healthcare community is. Yeah. Because I guess, in part, you know, just functionally, we're hospitals. Yeah. You know, there there's a building. There's a yeah. there's you know a centralized sort of structure. Yeah. Literally. Um, whereas the line community, you know, they're in the field, they're going to save, you know, they're going to do what they need to do to save their lives, not from a healthcare standpoint, but from a how to communicate standpoint. Yep. And there's a lot of innovation and decentralization, I think, yep. that, that does happen on that side. Um, it's interesting how that, I think that was true then and it's yep. continued now. So how do you reach that level of creativity and, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I hear about this a lot. I just don't see it. I mean, I, I, that's my fear is that, that that's being hidden from uh, people that want to tap into it. Uh, well, all the Lyme communities and the healthcare communities at least were and I think continue to be quite separate in the military. Yeah. Okay. Great. They're not great, but okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you can't see them, you know. Yeah. But it, it might be worth trying to figure it out, particularly as, you know, with these significant budget cuts, yeah. you know, there may be more melding of those communities just to, to chop off some of the layers. Well, I, I think budget cuts might be good for healthcare. I mean, it, it might cause people to go back and reassess what really needs to be done and cut out a lot of the uh, nonsense that is running up the cost and uh, reevaluating the um, what we're doing, so I'm, I'm sure that's heretical in Washington circles that uh, you could do more with less. But uh, I, I had an interview with the Ward Cunningham, the inventor of the wiki, and we both. He said he couldn't have done wiki if he had a lot of money. Yeah. You know, it, it has to come out of this uh, uh, need and assessment. And I think if DHCP had more money, we would not have succeeded. I mean, the fact that we had to scrimp and we had to rely on the end users. We couldn't hire consultants to help us, so, well, we've got 100,000 users out there, let's see who wants to help. And we linked into it, Forum eventually grew to 50,000 people on the website, and call that a social network today, but, um, and for any given problem, we had a world-class expert that was one link away and we could talk to him, and I, I, it worked really well. So, um, so I, th I think there's a lot to be said for grassroots involvement and uh, this agile development of starting with something that's good enough that's within the constraints of patient safety and privacy and all that kind of stuff but you still have this creative space for, for evolving over time mm -hmm. and what's important is that you make it a f fast feedback that the, the people that are looking at it can, can feedback and control it. Now Alta had a, an effort in DOD and you know, it took five years for uh, secretary to say this is all too intolerable and it was five years worth of, of development before somebody said oh this isn't working uh, with Vista you know it was a day by day you know thing in the early days it's it slowed down of time over time of course but I think that feedback loop is really critical and I, I I'm concerned that we're not baking that into the current uh, architecture if you will how are we doing for other topics? Do you have anything else you want to talk about, or any? Uh, you have a whole pile of stuff. I have there. a pile of stuff here, but you know, I, I, I have to you know, okay. um, dig through it. And there's stuff that I think you might enjoy having yeah. some copies of, as we've talked about. You know, uh, 
There was the there was the uh, concerned citizen letter. Remember the concerned citizen? No. It's right. It's right here. Somewhere. Sorry, I would have marked these things. Um, but this is the congressional language in '84 that that mandated yeah. that we do the project uh, at March and paid for it. Um, and then there's Sonny Montgomery. Okay. Yeah. Ian Coon. Um, Sonny Montgomery. Who was his um, staff person? That's right. Okay, deeply concerned citizen letter. And what did he say? Um, a serious breach of ethics and conflict of interest. Oh, yeah. Uh, regarding um, procurement. And he named some specific individuals, which we won't repeat. Yeah. Um, and then um, his, his entire point was that he felt that, that there was so much incestuous behavior within the DOD community of yeah. people that were just really um, not going to let go of the idea that it would be a vendor-based system. I see. Um, and so that one uh, was sent to the, uh, the Honorable Joseph Sherrick, Inspector General of Department of I Defense. I see. So this is 96? 86. 86. Yeah, 86. this was during the trimester procurement for CHCS. Okay. Right. Um, which actually, I think, in part, um, was a factor in having the set aside uh -huh. come about. Uh -huh. Although, again, that was sort of, I'm not even sure that was middle ground. What? The? Know, to have a set, to have a yeah. vendor base set aside was, yeah. was, was, was um, you know, not entirely what some of us were going for, but yeah. anyway. Um, and, you know, there were, we made the pages of U.S. Madison, you talked to Nancy, Nancy? Nancy Tomich, Nancy. yeah, she's still active uh, in San Diego, and uh, I've got a number of interviews with her. Um, yeah, I'd point out that, that, that CHCS, when we did do the fly-off, uh, I think the CHCS bid for total deployment was just over a billion dollars, and the nearest neighbor was Lockheed Martin, or <laughs> McDonnell Douglas, and they were at 1.7, and I think Technicon would have been 2.2 billion. Yeah. So, um, at least the first round was a whole lot cheaper. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that my frustration was, first of all, I, I never met a CHCS user. Uh, in Loma Linda, I you couldn't have coffee without people accosting me in the hospital and telling me what was going on. But in my entire time at SAIC, I never met a CHCS user. I never went to a site. Um, well, I went to a site, but just the conference room, but I never actually saw it in operation. And it was like this total divorce between the users and the effect that I was causing, and the papers had come flying across my desk. Mm -hmm. And at, by the time it got to me, you know, take this little piece and make this little piece do this little thing. And I said, well, what about the bigger piece? Well, that's not your job, you know? Well, actually, you know, the interesting sort of when you say next thing is we talked about here's the HCP and here are the the tri red the tri farm yeah. sorry trimus yeah. IOCs yeah. and then you know we had the sharing agreement we tested it which resulted in the set aside mm -hmm. and the requirement was that they evaluate these you know it turned out to be three vendors I believe yeah. you know Technicon yeah, and, yeah Mark Merritt and, and, and SAIC which was the VA software mm -hmm. and SAIC was selected yeah. so it was the VA software that yeah. was installed with all the vendor hooks that were part yeah. of it. And CHCS was not an unsuccessful system. No, I, it was a very successful system. I mean, it, it had the, the problems of not being flexible and agile and you know, sort yeah. of things like that. But it was so far ahead of what was in yeah. the civilian community uh, for years. Mm -hmm. I often say, you know, we were ten years ahead of our time. Ten years ago. Yeah, I think it was <laughs> successful. I mean, and um, I, I'm just finding out now that apparently SAIC copyrighted the code. I, I mean, somebody mentioned that, and I, I wasn't aware of that. And it wasn't open source, um, so that that's that, you know it's, it's been 20 years. I don't remember every everything that happened back then, but um, I don't think open source was was part of it. But um, I can tell you that SAIC had you know a very difficult time taking this elsewhere. I think uh, we had a disastrous effort in France and and uh, uh, things like that, and um, so that the a, a business strategy to take that software and, and replicate it um, uh, didn't work, shall mm -hmm. we say. Um, we, I, I'm 10, 
10 years out more than SAIC, so I'm not really them anymore. But, um, well, um, great. Any other topics or, I mean, did you get? No, I think, you know, it's just interesting to see where it's gone and where it hasn't gone. Yeah. Uh, on, the, on the DOD side and um, other than the visual interface, if yeah. you walk in and sit down in the computer and DOD, it's not all that much different than it was. Yeah, I, I could show you my MacBook uh, Mac Air over there, and, and it, it's running the same old stuff. I brought up Mailman and looked at the same code that I did back there, and the yeah. code's still there. I, I guess I would like to see it evolve a little more uh, faster. I, there are pieces there. I, I think the lesson learned, though, is um, it has to be a combination between the, the managerial and the political and bureaucratic uh, world reality and the, and the technology and, and it has to be uh, a combination of both. Uh, there's a lot to be said for moving quickly in a, uh, uh, a fast uh, moving area, I call it virgin territory, and not displacing the bureaucracy and, and getting yourself in. For example, email, uh, I wasn't displacing anybody. Mailman just came in and people discovered that it worked. Right. But I didn't ask permission. Uh, neither one of us asked permission, right. I think. Yes, and, uh, Grace Hopper was our hero. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I certainly appreciate your, your efforts over the years, Beth. And uh, it's been a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing to look back on. It was while. fun to so. read all about it and remember. I mean, we, I learned drinking from a fire hose, really, when I was I doing it. And it was really, it was a, it was a fun time. Great. So, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay.